Hello and God bless you young people. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church where my pastor is Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. Young people, I am so proud of you for taking time to study God's word with me on today. I hope that you're having a good, safe start of your school year. I pray that you're doing everything that you're supposed to do. Remember, I remind you every week, make sure that you're reading your Bible every day. Make sure you're praying every day. Make sure that you're doing those things that are pleasing uh, to God. And I know that you're going to do well. So I'm praying for you and I want you to know that. Now, we also want to let you know that uh, we are very concerned for you and we want you to continue to grow and learn about God. So every Wednesday, uh, we do have a Zoom call at 6 p.m. where we go over the promises that are found in the Bible. So the promises of God. So the link to that video or to the Zoom call, the link to the Zoom call is in the description of this video. Uh, so please, please join us on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. for our Bible study. And we don't, we're not very long, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And we just go over a promise, we pray together, and then we go on with the rest of our week. So we want you to be a part of that. All right, before we go into our lesson for today, let's pray. Gracious God, we do say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity. Thank you for these young people. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just please keep them safe and help them to know that you're always with them. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Young people, our lesson for today comes from Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Our lesson topic is leading others by obeying God. Our golden text is Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, and it says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And so I want to catch us all up on what's going on. Now, if you've been a part of the Wednesday night Bible study over the last year, we've actually gone through this story. And so let me tell you that God's special group of people are in a place called Egypt. Everyone knows that. And of course, everyone knows the story about how God led them across the Red Sea on dry land. But before he did that, he had to prepare a leader to help his people get it across the Red Sea and ultimately to the land that he wanted them to be in. God had allowed them to be in this land called Egypt, but unfortunately, God's people were being mistreated. They were being treated like slaves, and there was a lot of bad things happening. They were being mistreated, and there was a person that was in charge called a pharaoh. A pharaoh is like the leader, the president, the ruler, the person that's in charge of Egypt. And he was mistreating God's people to the point where God uh, wanted to prepare someone to help them to get out of Egypt. And that's really where our lesson is going to begin because God allows a young person by the name of Moses to be born, even to the point where one day God is going to call Moses even though he wasn't in Egypt anymore because he ran for his life after getting in trouble in Egypt, God finds Moses and God is going to speak to Moses and he's going to prepare Moses to help get God's people out of Egypt. And that's where our lesson begins. So in chapter three, verse one, we see that Moses is minding his own business. Imagine being outside and you are maybe for what we might no, or more you might understand is like you're on a farm, right? You're on a farm or you're out there with a lot of animals, cows and sheep and all those different things like that. And so you're just out there doing your thing. And out of nowhere, you look over and you see this bush or you may think of it like a tree or whatever you want to think of it as in the Bible, it's a bush. And for some reason, this bush is on fire. Now, what happens when a bush gets on fire? Well, if you're like me, you would say that the bush is going to do what? If it's on fire, it's going to burn. Yeah, but the thing about this bush was it was on fire, but it was not, and I'm going to use this word, it was not being consumed. What does that mean? It was not burning. It was burning as far as the fire was kindling, and you could see it was on fire, 
but it was not burned down. Now, what you might want to understand is that they were actually in the desert. And so there was no water around. So if something were to catch on fire, that was pretty much the end of it. But even in the desert, this bush was burning, but it was not being consumed. It was not being burnt down. So verse two says there was something special about this bush. And according to verse two, this was the way that God was going to get Moses' attention. He was going to get Moses' attention by speaking to him from this bush. Now, let me tell us young people, God is not a bush. God is not, uh, you know, some leaves and branches. That's not what God is. But God used this as a special way to speak to Moses because he had to get Moses' attention. So God speaks to Moses and he calls him and he says, Moses, Moses, according to verse four, Moses is looking at this bush and out of nowhere, this bush, some sounds come from this bush and they cry. God is speaking to him and Moses says, here I am, here I am. And so God, as Moses is seeing, just like you would, I don't know about you all, but if I saw this, I'd probably start walking towards the bush, trying to figure out what's going on. So God, Moses starts walking towards the bush, according to verse five. And then God calls out to him and says, don't come any closer. He says, draw not nigh hither. Don't come any further. And not only that, but take off your shoes because the ground that you're on, because my presence is here. I'm God. My presence is here. This is holy ground. Now, a lot of you all will ask the question, why would Moses have to take off his shoes? Well, it was customary. That means it was a practice of that day that in order to show reverence, you would take off your shoes. Almost kind of like when you go into people's houses, right? It's, it's very rare. I know when people come to my house, I want them to take their shoes off. Uh, but it's kind of like that, not all the way, but it's something to think about that we can associate that you can kind of understand and make a connection to. It's kind of a show of respect. Like when someone comes to your house and it's raining and pouring and, and are just dirt and everything, you tell them, take your shoes off at the door. Well, in God's presence, Moses was told to take off his shoes as a sign of respect of just who God was. And God lets him know the reason why you're doing this is because my presence is here and this is holy ground. What does holy ground mean? Well, holy ground means that this is not just anywhere. My presence is here. So this is not just anywhere. This is holy ground. That means it's been set apart. It's special. It's unique. And so you ought to respect it. So God now identifies himself. Remember, now Moses is just hearing a sound come from this bush. He didn't know who it was or anything like that. He just knows that he's hearing this sound. So now God identifies himself and he says, that I am the God of thy father. He says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now let's talk about this. Who is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, it's kind of like in your family. When you think about someone very important, it's usually your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your grandmother, your great-grandmother. Well, in this, in this situation, the children of Israel had a very important person that was at the top of their family tree. And his name was Abraham. And so Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. So why is God saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, one thing he's letting them know is that I am the God of you all. I am the God, but he's also letting her know that I just didn't get here. I've always been here. I am the God. He says, not that I was the God, but he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so now we want to move now, starting in verse seven, where God is now introducing himself through speaking through this burning bush. But now we move in verse seven, where God is going to tell Moses exactly why he stopped him in this desert. 
this desert called Mount at the Mount of Horeb or the Mountain of Horeb, or you might hear it as Mount Horeb. So now, you know, all I got is this, uh, this, this desert, uh, this, this, this bush speaking out to me. You're telling me that you're God. Well, what do you want with me? I think we would all say that if someone stopped you and, and was talking to you, you would probably say, well, what do you want with me? Why, why are you talking to me? Well, God is going to let him know that guess what? I have seen what has been going on in Egypt. Remember I told you God's children have been taken advantage of. They're being treated like slaves. They're being treated very badly. So God tells Moses, I've seen what these, what the Egyptians are going through. In verse seven, I've heard their cries and I know their sorrows. What does that tell us about God? That he sees what we go through. Young people, there's not a thing that you go through that God does not see. He is what we call omnipresent. And then he says, I've heard their cry. If you cry or you have a concern, God knows and he hears your concerns. But then he says, I know their sorrow. And that's another thing that we can know about God is that he is omniscient. That is a big word that just means that he knows all. He's omnipresent. He is omniscient. I mean, he knows all. And so we have to realize just how the powerful God we serve. And so he says, I've seen what they're going through. I've heard their cry. I know their sorrows. But verse eight says, I am come down to deliver them. Now, when God says he's coming down to deliver them, remember, he's not talking about that he's going to come down, not God in a physical sense. God does not come down to deliver. God is everywhere because God is a spirit. So what he's saying is that I'm going to be using you, Moses. I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the authority. I'm going to give you the right and the privilege to, to get these people, my children, out of Egypt. And I'm going to take them to this large land where they're going to worship me. Now, imagine, and we're almost done. Imagine that you were Moses and God just told you that he was going to use you to do something that seems weird. Seems like you couldn't do it. Seems impossible. Imagine if you were Moses, what would be your response? Some might say, well, oh, yes, God. OK, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. But if you're real with yourself, most of you all would be like, I don't think I can do this. You want me to go back to Egypt. The people don't really like me there. And you want me to go back to Egypt. And you want me to go to this powerful ruler named Pharaoh. What if he kills me? What if something happens to me? Well, if you chose that response, if you chose that reply, that answer, then you're just like Moses. Because Moses says, who am I? He says, who am I in verse 11? He says, who am I to go to Pharaoh? Why would I even go to Pharaoh? What, why are you sending me? One thing I didn't tell you young people was Moses was at least 80 years of age. Now, I'm not saying that just because you're 80 that you can't do anything, but it just wouldn't make sense that God would be using Moses at such an old age. But remember, with God, all things are possible. So God lets him know that, yes, I understand. But he says in verse 12, and this is our last verse, he says something that we need to remember about God. No matter what God has for you to do, no matter what God wants you to do, whether it's at your church, in your, in your neighborhood, at your school, in college, or wherever you are, Remember verse 12 says, certainly I will be with thee. What does that mean in regular English? That means God is always going to be with us. God is always there. No matter what it is, no matter the task, no matter how hard it is, we need to realize and recognize and remember that God is always with us. And he says, and this shall be a token that I'm, you're going to remember this when you bring my children out of Egypt. And so we already know the story. We'll be studying this, but we already know what was the story that eventually 
God allowed the children of Israel to be free because Pharaoh allowed the people to leave Egypt. And he used Moses to allow that to happen. Isn't that a reminder, young people, that God is always with us? He prepares us. He doesn't just leave us, but he gives us promises to for us to be sure that he's always going to be with us no matter what. You need to remember that this week. No matter what's going on at school, no matter what's going on at home, God is always with you. God is always going to take care of you because he has a promise for you. And we can rest assured, that means we can always be positive that God is going to keep his promises. God bless you, young people. I hope that you have learned something that will help you out this week. God bless you. Have a great week.